While the best methods of arm wrestling training haven't been studied and identified, they don't really need to be because we can take what we already know from the science of other strength sports. Submaximal pulling and weights, we don't know what Devin does with weights right now, to be fair, is not the best way to get strong. These lifts are tailored to building strength in a very specific and limited range of motion that emulates the arm wrestling starting position. I think that they are valuable mostly for those that have already built a good base. Most amateur arm wrestlers would likely be far better off starting by training basic compound exercises such as pull-ups, dips, bench, etc., using a full range of motion in order to develop their muscles optimally while going to practice once or twice per month. Later down the line, when you've built a decent strength base, you can start focusing more of your time sharpening the tip of your spear. Devin tapers down table time before super matches, not because of overwork, but because he says he's much more likely to get small injuries in table time versus lifts, so he wants to avoid that. His philosophy is that, would you not do as much work leading up to your 1RM day, where you're supposed to be your strongest? The answer should be no, so why treat match day differently? Table time should be with minimal, can't emphasize how minimal, intensity. Just practice the movements, basically. In the gym, keep the weights the same, but reduce the volume over two weeks. Me, depending on how broken down you are before, you need to end up with less than 50% volume. It's worth noting that by always training in compromised positions with an unfavorable setup, he is leveraging up the amount of resistance he is pulling against which can do a little bit to bridge the strength gap and achieve a training effect. Training closer to one arm elicits greater strength gains. While for hypertrophy, various training styles give the same hypertrophy as long as volume is equated in general. However, there is credible theory with evidence that those shorter-term strength gains are largely from neural adaptations and will taper off and that to maintain strength gains in the very long-term hypertrophy is absolutely essential. Within the individual, a bigger muscle has larger potential force output, being a function of cross-sectional area. My personal opinion is that long-term training should be structured around hypertrophy, with enough work at closer to one arm to obtain and maintain the neurological and technical benefits you get. Training further from failure will let you do more volume and arguably give you more progress, assuming you are still above the minimum intensity, but will require a bigger time investment. Higher intensity will mean your maximum recoverable volume is lower, but you're in the gym for less time. Which route you choose depends on your time preferences. There are so many lanes and angles and compound movements that can potentially be used in a match I think Devin uses his ridiculous table time to hit them all, which would be hard if he had monster training partners that wore him out after a few pulls doing the same movements where they were. Strongest. Also, he does go to failure in the session, so those fibers are getting torn up. He definitely has a plan that he believes gives him the best possible chance and it's fun to watch. Everyone has their own way of training. When someone is arguably in the top three in the world, I think it's a little ridiculous to be critical of their methods. Devin doesn't just do sub-maximal high-volume training. He splits his training blocks into tens and three blocks. He does go heavy for sets of three. Devin is shredded with very little body fat. Meanwhile, his opponent walked around with like 35% body fat. Of course, this isn't bodybuilding. Looks don't matter. Mass moves mass. His frame definitely can handle a lot more mass. But from what I get, he has some serious digestive issues and or doesn't know how to properly eat to gain weight. Eating 7,000 calories mostly consists of foods like omelets with bacon and Doritos, pancakes with copious amounts of syrup, cooked in a pan which has collected infinite amounts of gunk and has a high chance of giving you stuff like heartburn and such. But consider how small the muscles that move the wrist, fingers, and rotate the forearm are compared to the large muscle groups. Then go watch some prime Oleg matches. You can have low overall body weight, 
but have enough strength where it counts to win. Devin doesn't have a 21-inch bicep, but if it was possible to measure the specific mass of some of these smaller muscles he is focused on developing, they are probably just as massive as what Levon has. More body weight would give Devin a stronger hit and allow him to power through more opponents, but he has a different game relying on getting to favorable positions, efficiency, and endurance. What matters is the force being produced at the end of the lever, the hand. Not how much contractile force Devin's elbow flexors have to produce to generate a particular force at his hand. So if Devin is lifting 160 pounds and his bicep has to produce X amount of force, and Levon is lifting 180 pounds and his bicep hypothetically only has to produce Y amount of force where Y is less than X, then Levin is still stronger even though Devin's bicep is working harder. Devin is saying he isn't showing everything. This lift is easy. Pound for pound he's stronger. And then calling on Levan to show more wrist work baiting him to provide info and injure himself. I think that despite Devin's cool delivery, the content is quite defensive. I think we are seeing early signs that he is starting to feel intimidated. And for good reason, arm wrestlers generally don't change too much over time unless they have injuries or heel past injuries being the exception. For example, injury forcing Dave to become an outside puller or healing in the past year allowing Devin to flop press for the first time in over a decade, at best they can become scaled up or scaled down versions of themselves. Levon's side pressure through his shoulder has never been that strong and historically once he gets on the losing side, he would lose very quickly. Levon relies very heavily on his drive through his bicep and overwhelming cup and containment, which may be why he seems so much weaker on the losing side despite being so overwhelming on offense. Even in the Hermes match, you could see that once he started getting pushed to the losing side, it looked like he was going to lose quickly. In almost all of Levon's past losses, once he lost total center domination, he would just get pinned somewhat quickly. Levan has no defense and has never had any defense. He cannot fight defensively against someone who is capable of gaining position on him, and all his past losses have shown this. Toddzilla has an interesting take on peaking, tapering in that he treats comp day like his one RM day. He stops his volume work, speed work, and isometrics. A very important factor nobody has mentioned yet is that Devin loves arm wrestling. He loves the feeling it gives. He's willing to arm wrestle for hours just to scratch that itch. And finally, he does care about his YouTube image. He understands by traveling and practicing with regular people, he gets a ton of exposure which ultimately helps his image. Too much, but I'll get it up. Probably fairly quickly. Yeah, it feels pretty light. This is one.